Hi all, thanks for watching my videos about printing. Uh, if you are like me and you love gel printing so that it's kind of an addiction, you at some point will end up with piles and piles of prints. So today I just want to talk about one way you can try to finish some of the unfinished prints. So let's get started. So one thing you can do is print a dark layer on top of your background. For example, here's a print. I think it's not quite finished. It's on printmaking paper, but it could be cardstock. And you have these kind of abstract shapes. I think it needs something sharp to contrast with the soft shapes. So one thing you could do is you could add a stencil if you have one. It has really sharp geometric shapes like this. That could be cool. You could even use tape to make lines. I have a lot of videos where I recently I've made where I show how to use tape to get straight lines. Let's try using our stencil. This is straight acrylic, the quick drying kind. And this is Mars Black. It should be pretty opaque and it should cover up a lot of our colored print. You don't need a lot of paint, just a blueberry sized dollop is what I usually recommend. I'm going to drop the stencil down and use it as a mask. This paper is about the size of the plate, so I'm just going to line up two corners and rub. Okay, so now you got a nice contrast between that original print and the dark. If we have time and we hurry a bit, we may be able to print this ghost print on a new, on an old print. Let's try it, Let's see if the paint comes up and it didn't, hopefully it didn't dry too much. And that was good ghost print, so it's much softer and it's got some kind of smudgy areas. But still, it's kind of cool. It gives you another layer on top of that pink and yellow and white. All right, we'll put that aside to dry. Now, this is now pretty dry, so it probably will not come up onto your print. If you tried to print it right now, it might not work very well. So what I like to do is just go ahead and let it dry. And then um, we will bring up this paint onto another print. And let's see how we do that. Let me find an old print that's unfinished. So, for example, this is a nice one, and it's got some black marks in places uh, and some pretty colors. So let's see if we can bring this black, these marks, onto this. I want to make sure this black is completely dry. It's not. I'm going to let it dry a couple more minutes and then come back. Okay, so back to it. Here's our unfinished print. And here's our plate that has dried paint on it, dried on purpose. We used a stencil to get a ghost print and this is what's left over from the ghost print. It's kind of smudgy, but it's nice. It's sort of like a graphite pencil drawing. 
and I want to lift this paint and print it on here. As usual, this is always experimental, but let's see what we can do. So I've got zinc white here, and I'm going to try zinc white. Zinc white is more translucent than um, titanium. And this is just Amsterdam, but you can use any brand. You can tell it's transparent because of the square right here. It has a line through it. Um, that means it's translucent. So let's go. We're going to apply the zinc white on here, about a blueberry size. Don't want too much. And we're just using, oh, maybe I didn't do enough. Using a thin layer of paint. Oh, somehow I got some blue on here. Oh, that's fabric. Okay. This is this is kind of an art because sometimes this works well, sometimes it doesn't. Now I'm gonna press my turn my print over and apply it here. And use a medium amount of pressure. If you want to use a brayer, you can. I'm just using my hands, but I really have to kind of make sure that the paper, that the paint on the paper makes con good contact with the wet paint on the plate. And now we're going to be patient and let that sit for about five minutes. And I'm not very good at this part, the patience part, but I'm going to walk away and come back. Okay, we're back. We let it dry for five minutes and now I'm going to peel it up. I may have to hold my plate down. It's working. Cross your fingers. Yep, it worked. Okay, so no more paint on the plate. And we transferred our black lines and black marks to that very pastel print. That's not bad. It's interesting. It's kind of uh, dynamic and it's uneven, very textured. So uh, I like it. I might want to make one part of it darker than the rest. So maybe I will go in with a, a black pencil or something and maybe make a one place kind of darker just because I like something to stand out. But anyway, try that. Zinc white on top of dried acrylic paint and you can transfer your dried uh, image to your unfinished print. Okay, so if you're going to add black, not that one, I like the aquarelles, aquarelles, even though these are technically watercolor pencils, they have a nice soft covering. So you don't have to add water to them just because it says aquarelle. Stabilo. Let's try um, adding a little bit of black to this in places. You know, you can use this if you want to correct a piece or just add a little bit more or something. And it's pretty dark. And so I like it for that. You can touch up an area or just, just lightly add a little bit of accent or something. Sometimes I'll do that with my finished, semi-finished gel prints. Just kind of bump up some of the blacks or the darks. And... Gel printing is really good, but it's not perfect. I mean, sometimes you end up with these kind of uneven areas and you just want to heighten them, bring them out a little bit more. And it's perfectly okay to do that. Okay, so you could keep doing that. This one too, if you, I like it the way it is, but let's say you don't, you want a little more sharpness here? You just go in and kind of sharpen these areas here a little bit, the edges. I think I need to sharpen this pencil.
In a funny way, I kind of like that smudginess that's almost showing motion here, almost like you smudged it. So I don't really want to take that away because I think it's kind of cool. So I'll leave some of that effect and maybe just if there's misprinted areas a couple places, I might just tighten them up with my pencil and leave some of that nice smudginess. Sometimes you want imperfection because it makes the print look more interesting, I think. That's my opinion. And also, you're going to see a few areas of high contrast. Really light with dark, really light with dark, really light with dark. Here, 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 here. So those make nice little, you know, sparks of contrast in the print. So just something to think about. I might keep working on this. Maybe like here, maybe add some white to that. Maybe add some darks in a couple more places, but I kind of like the combination of the pastel colors with the dark jaggedy lines on the top. And I like this washy background behind this very uh, rhythmic pattern. And this one is kind of a cool effect of almost like the smudgy lines almost look like graphite pencil, as if someone just wiped it away or something because it's so imperfect. Um, but that's nice. You know, as usual, gel printing has a lot of potential and you can deliberately print imperfectly and that is okay. So I um, hope you enjoyed that and um, please check out my other videos, especially the ones where I use tape. In case you don't have a stencil like that, you can always use uh, tape, cut the tape really thin. Here's some tape that's fairly thin, but you can get much thinner tape than that. And uh, try making some patterns and um, print over your unfinished prints. Let me know if you try it uh, in the comments. I'd like to know how it goes. Thanks.